Hey guys, I am Sammy King and today I want to show you guys how to properly install flashing around a brick chimney. Now to prep this chimney for flashing, we're going to grind a groove into this chimney. It's going to be at least a 7 8 inch deep just to accept at least a 3 quarter inch bend into the chimney. So I'm going to measure up from the roof right and this point right here and then just measure up. Now this chimney does have some bad joints and stuff but probably needs some tuck pointing later. But as of right now my piece of flashing is just going to come up. I'll probably do somewhere around 6 inches to cover the worst part of this that might not be fixable with uh, mortar. First of all, I'm going to grind just the bottom part of this and then I'm going to shingle up through and then I'll measure to cut my groove in for the rest of the flashing. So on the bottom here, I'm going to measure a mark at five and a half inches, snap a line there and grind that and then we'll come back and do the sides once it's shingled up. Now again, we're going to make sure we go in at least a good 7 8 inch to receive a 3 quarter bend in to the chimney. When you get to that point with your flashing, you don't want to be struggling and hitting against. Just make sure you grind out plenty. I've got my angle grinder with a masonry blade on it. That's it for that one. We're going to shingle up through, shingle up the sides, and then come and measure the flashing for the sides. You can go and grind that all the way around. Some people do that, but I find that there's some variation, and when you get your shingles on and then grind it, you can get it perfect with the measurement. Sometimes if you grind beforehand and then you put your shingles on at the top, it'll be just a little bit longer, and then you have to vary the piece a little, but I'll show you. I'm going to shingle up, and then we're going to grind the rest. Alright, so at this point we are ready to bend a piece of flashing for the bottom of the chimney. That's where we're going to get started. At this point you will need access to a uh, metal brake to bend this. Um, I am using just regular trim coil. It is advisable um, to use a heavier gauge metal and a lot of people do. but. A lot of people also do not and it should be perfectly fine it's just that I didn't want to buy a full roll of heavier gauge metal just to do this one chimney and I need it in black so I can use the black trim coil elsewhere so I'm gonna go ahead and just use regular trim coil so what I'm gonna do here is just get all these measurements with the piece I'm gonna make it just a little over two feet about 26 inches and then I'm going to bend this piece going into this groove that I cut. I'm going to take it in through there a 7 8 inch and then we're going to bend it down from that groove and I'm going to go about, let me just check both sides, we're going to go right at 5 and a quarter on that. So we're going to take it into the chimney a 7 8, 5 and a quarter, and then we just want to bring a flange down close to our exposure. We're just going to go down 6 inches um, so to shed all that water down over uh, to where it needs to go. So 7 8 into the chimney, we got 5 and a quarter down from the bend, and then 6 inches down onto the shingles. 
Okay, so I got this double-sided trim coil I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the black side for my chimney. Uh, so I wanna cut off a 26 inch piece that we're gonna use to bend our bottom piece of flashing out of. Now again, I know uh, a lot of guys use this and it'll work just fine, uh, but I do prefer a slightly heavier gauge, uh, if possible, for flashing chimneys. All right, so, so we wanna start by finding the overall width of the piece we're gonna need. Um, so we have the 7 8 gone into the chimney, five and a quarter and the six. So we are gonna need 12 and 1 8 on the overall width of the piece. And if you have access to a brake, this is basically how you're gonna bend this. So we're cutting this at 12 and 1 8. So now our first bend is going to be the bend that goes into the chimney, into that groove that we cut. And for that, we're going to bend that at 7 eighths of an inch. We're going to bend that pretty much at a perfect 90. And as you can see, there we've got the bend, the black side's going to be out. This is going to go into the chimney. Now we want to flip it with the black side up because we've got to get a bend. We've got to get a bend to bend this bottom up. That's going to go down over that shingle down to the exposure. So we're going to take this up, bend it right in here at what was the measurement? Five and a quarter from this point down to the corner. Now this bend here, you're gonna to wanna to bend according to the pitch of your roof. So in my case, I have a seven pitch. I'm gonna bend this and just take a guess, but I'm gonna keep it on the light side and try to bend it maybe not quite hard enough and then you just push it and jam it back into the corner. So I'm gonna go with something right like this, which is probably a little more than a seven pitch, but when I put it in there, I'm just gonna push it back into the corner. It's not ultra important that this is right on. It'll bend a little bit as you push it back in there. So let's go try this out. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just set this piece in there and see how it fits full length without cutting anything. We're gonna put it in. And so push it into the groove and then push it back into the corner down here. That is pretty much exactly what we're looking for. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark on the inside with my pencil, right in the corner here, right along the brick. I'll go right like that, make a little mark right here. And the same thing on the other side. Just gonna go mark inside right up through there and we're going to take the piece back off and make our cuts all right so here we've got our marks and we're just going to take a 10 snips cut right in through here on an angle now this is the top flange that goes into the chimney down here is the bottom corner on the roof cutting an angle right down through here to the bottom corner where it goes to the roof. So right down to where my mark is on an angle. So right in there we're gonna stop it and then on the top I'm gonna cut it back right with my mark right here and we're gonna angle up through to that point 
to the point that goes into the chimney. And this little tab here, this little piece can just be broken right off of there. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. On an angle down to that point uh, where it hits the roof and on another angle up to the 7 8 inch tab. Cut the 7 8 inch tab off at that mark that I made. And now we're going to take this that's left here and just bend it around. It's going to bend right on the mark that I made. And we're going to bend it pretty hard and then bring it back some so that the bend ends up nice and sharp. Now we're going to stick this in there with it being cut and put that 7 8 inch tab right into the cutout and push it in some. Push it in as far as we can. It should look something right like that. And then the bottom, push the bottom in. And now we're going to take our nailer and put a couple of nails right in here, nail these tabs down. So make sure this is pushed back real good, back into the corner. But just put a few nails in there. All right, so now the bottom piece is completely nailed into place. And we're just going to go out and put a piece of step flashing on each side here before we do any shingles and have the step flashing come down past this corner a good little bit. And now just take pencil and mark the back side or the, the corner of the step flashing right in here. Now you'll want to locate that mark that you made on the step flashing, cut right in through the corner of the step flashing right to that mark, and then cut parallel with the mark that you made and leave an extra inch at least on beyond the mark that you made on this step flashing. So we'll go right like this and cut that off. And now we're gonna bend it around right at the, the mark that was made on there. It's gonna go something right like this. Snip that corner straight. And now we're ready to put it down over the bottom piece of counter flashing. So now this piece that we cut is going to go right in here over this corner right like so. Now you want this to be pretty watertight without caulk if you wouldn't have the option of caulk but we do. So we're going to put a little bit of caulk right into this corner and then squeeze this piece of step flashing over the caulk and nail it into place. that's running down through here should just run right down through the edge of this step flashing and down onto this shingle. Now you'll definitely want to keep this pathway here clear of any nails right down underneath here. Keep any nails on this counter flashing to the center to the sides and make sure this path here is just cleared. So now that we've got this step flashing on both sides we're gonna go ahead and just lay our next shingle in there and what you're doing now is just that shingle around this uh, counter flashing and up both sides of the chimney on the step flashing. I've got a shingle notched here to go around the chimney and up the sides but before I install that I'm going to go ahead and put a bead of caulk across the uh, bottom piece of counter flashing just to help hold this in place and we're going to leave little uh, gaps in there for water drainage but this is mostly just to hold that piece in place and then we're going to cover this little nail up here and then just run a little bead right down through here and that's going to be it. Now we're ready to throw this bottom uh, 
piece that's notched. We're ready, ready to throw that on. Side here and out here for the time being. Now at this point you're basically ready to run step flashing up both sides of the chimney until we get to the top. Um, so we're going to start with a piece right over top of this. We'll just cut this little tab off here that's sticking down past because of how this comes out and then from that point after we got this piece on just continue to run up through with a piece of step flashing on every shingle. All right, so up here on the top of the chimney, we're gonna go down, put our last piece of step flashing on here, down close to the exposure of the shingle, just like you normally would run step flashing, and take your pencil and make a mark on the back side of this again, right in there. And you're gonna flip this piece around, locate your mark that you made, and Cut in on an angle right down into that point of the mark, into the corner of the step flashing, right in there. Now you're just gonna bend this tab flat to the roof, and the other one's gonna get bent around the corner of the chimney, right like that. It's gonna go something right like that. We're gonna nail that in place, and then we're gonna repeat on the other side, and I'm gonna show you how this top piece of flashing is gonna go on here, side pieces and everything. We're gonna run the other side up just like this and we'll get into detail about how the rest of this is done. All right, so we've got the step flashing run all the way up on both sides, which means we're ready to cut our groove into the rest of the chimney for the sides and the top. And to do that, to get that measurement, I'm just going to check what it takes to get right up above this bottom piece. So the cut for this is going to end up coming down right above this bottom piece. So we're going to go around and measure and put a cut in at it looks like four and a half and just check this side um, so yeah we're gonna go at four and a half uh, and snap a line all the way around the chimney uh, when we get this side you know, we're gonna end up doing the same thing with the top we'll do the four and a half here and then on the top to get that mark it'll be just above this cut that we're making on the side so that the top piece ends up uh, the groove is going to end up just above these side grooves.
So we've got the groove cut all the way around. Now we just need to pull a measurement for our flashing that's going to go on here. There's going to be a one inch tab that comes out on the shingles this way. And then we're going to get a measurement from the shingles to the groove, which should be right at about four and a half. So again, there's just going to be a one inch tab coming out. And we're going to go four and a half up on the chimney. And then we're going to bend it into the chimney, the same as we did on the bottom piece, a seven eighth inch. And then we're going to also get our top piece, which we want a 26 inch piece overall. And then this one, we're going to take up uh, this one, we're going to take up five and one eighth. And then the piece gone up onto the roof, we can have that as long as we want. Okay, so we're ready to cut our side and top pieces. We had four foot six for the sides and 26 inches for the top. So let's get those cut and then we'll bend those. So we're going to bend our side pieces first. We want to start by figuring out the overall width of the piece that we need. And that's going to be the 7 8 end of the chimney plus the 4 half going down and then the 1 inch out onto the roof. So that is going to end up being 6 and 3 8. We'd be adding an inch and 7 8 uh, to the 4 and a half. So 5 and a half six and three eighth is what we want to cut the overall width so out of this four foot six piece i'm going to cut two of those strips at six and three eighth All right, so I got both of my six and three eighth inch strips. Now I'm gonna start bending this with the seven eighth end of the chimney. We're gonna go down, do the one inch out on the roof. So to do the seven eighth inch bend, I wanna put the back side of the coil up, leave a seven eighth sticking out of the break here. nice uh, complete 90 on this one so that's our 7 8 gone into the the groove that we cut in the chimney and we're gonna flip the piece around with the black side up the black side up and the 7 8 groove is facing out away from the break right now and then we're gonna measure that one at the four and a half now this bend here with the one inch tab going out on the roof we're going to keep a little bit less than 90 so that that uh, so it gets nice and snug in there against the roof when we push that in. So we're going to leave this just a little bit under 90. So something like that. And we'll repeat the process for the other one. Alright, so moving on to the top piece, we've got the 26 inches by the full 24 inch of uh, width of the trim coil. So I'm going to just start, we're going to take the full 24 inch width and start by bending the 7 8 that goes into the chimney. Now I do need to stick the 
short side into the brake because the back of the brake just isn't deep enough to receive the entire width of this trim coil. So I'm going to have to make a mark on the back side like this and stick it in the opposite way of what I'm used to doing. So I'll take it right like this and bend this 7 8 that goes into the chimney. a nice clean 90 on the part that goes into the groove in the chimney so we've got that and then the measurement for the top we wanted to go let's see what we got here five and a quarter five and a quarter for the top so there again I'm gonna have to stick the shorter end into the brake just make my marks So this last band here, uh, this is the one where it's gone up the roof. This big, uh, the leftover part here, we're gonna leave all that on. And we're gonna bend this a little past 90 to make up for the pitch of the roof. So there, again, we're just gonna guess that and maybe keep it a little uh, less than the pitch and then push it into place if we need to. But it's gonna look something like, something like that bent a little harder for the pitch and then again we're just going to leave it doesn't matter how much you have left on your piece going up the roof here so that's it for the flashing the last thing i'm going to do is cut a little section of ice and water that we're going to put in over top of this after this piece of metal is installed all right so we're just going to do a three foot piece of ice guard for the top side of the chimney after we get the top piece of metal flashing in. All right, so we're gonna start by taking one of the side pieces and just loosely fitting that piece in there, putting the 7 8 inch into the groove that we cut into the chimney. Just gonna very loosely put it in there right now and then we're going to go ahead and make our marks on the inside of this piece just pushing the piece in snug in against and taking a pencil and making a mark on the back side just right along there same thing on the top <clears throat> just push it in against and make a mark on the back side with your pencil just all the way up along there now we're going to take the piece and make our cuts. All right, so starting with the bottom mark that we made, we're going to cut in through on an angle down to the corner where the one inch tab is that goes out on the roof. I'm just going to go something like that on an angle. And then on the top, we're going to go straight in through on the corner by the by the uh, 7 8 inch tab that goes into the chimney straight in through to where that mark comes up into the corner so just right in through on the corner right to where that mark comes into the corner now we're going to take this 7 8 inch tab because of this cut and we're going to leave about a 3 quarter inch past where the cut comes into the corner so that you have a little tab of about a three quarter inch sticking out. Then on the bottom part where the one inch tab is out on the roof where we made that cut in, we're gonna snip that tab off 
right even with the line, the mark that we made on the back of this. That's the one inch tab out on the roof. Now we're gonna take and make another mark parallel with this line that we drawed and go about an inch and a quarter and make a line parallel with that. Now we're cutting this off right at that inch and a quarter mark that I just made, running parallel with the first line that we drew on the back side of this. <clears throat> All right, so this little inch and a quarter uh, piece here past the mark is going to get bent around so you can just take that and bend it around with your hand and make sure you bend it extra hard so that you get a nice clean bend and then bring it back because if you bend it past and then bring it back that's going to give you a cleaner bend so take it past bring it back and then you're going to still want to let it a little bit past a 90 so that it gets nice and snug in there against the bottom of the chimney. Now moving to the top mark that we made. This one we're going to take in on a pretty hard angle down to where the mark meets the one inch tab that goes out on the roof. Cutting in on the back side. And on the top, we're going to cut the 7 8 inch tab that goes into the chimney right straight in to where the mark is that we made. And again, angle up on the 4 half inch way and just cut that whole little corner out of there. Now we're going to take this top little corner that's left and bend that around the same as we did the bottom. But that's going to be a longer tab because it's all going to get covered up so bend it a little extra hard bring it back and then we are all set to fit the piece in now we're going to go and just kind of check it again to make sure it's going to work here is the bottom where we bent that tab around and that's going to go right in there like that and the rest of this just going to pop right in into the groove all the way along. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna fit just fine. So we're gonna take it back out and apply a bead of clear caulk right on this little tab here. And that's gonna hold this, because this tab comes right over the bottom like this. And so that bead of caulk that we put in there is gonna help hold that in and then the other thing that holds this in is our one inch tab coming out onto the roof is less than a 90 and it gets nice and tight as you push it back in there and that piece will never move out of there at all. You don't have any nails, you don't have any kind of concrete anchors or anything. It's just caulk holding it on the bottom and then you push it in nice and snug and a couple nails on this tab on the top. And we're gonna put a pretty generous bead of caulk right on this tab right here. <clears throat> so now we're gonna go and pop this in place and it's gonna be in place for good. All right, and then this just gets nice and snug when you push this bottom in because of the way that we cut this or uh, bent this less than a 90. And so that just holds that in place real nice. Top's nice, just push that bottom in and it gets real nice and snug. All right, so once you got that piece in there nice and snug, go ahead and nail down this tab right in here, pound this down, and put a couple nails in there as well. There we've got a couple nails holding the top right here and this bottom is pushed in real nice and tight 
uh, just a lot of pressure in there. And then we're going to get a nice bead of caulk. This chimney needs some. Uh, this chimney needs some uh, pointing that's going to have to be done. But as of right now, this gets a nice bead of caulk right along here, and uh, the bottom obviously has the caulk holding it down here, and then just a lot of pressure that holds it in because the piece is nice and snug, nice and tight, and that holds it in down the bottom. So. Now we're just going to repeat the process on the other side uh, with the side flashing and then we'll get to the top. So we're ready for the most critical piece of the whole chimney and that's the top. Uh, this is kind of what your top should look like when you're done. Both sides are on. See how I nailed the tabs to keep the tops in place. So start the same way that we've started with pretty much all our pieces, which is just putting them in place and making the marks. So kind of center it out on the chimney, uh, push it down into the uh, down into the corner, and pop that tab in place. Just kind of loosely fitting it in place, and then we're going to make marks on both sides, on the back side, just like we've done all the way around so far. So back on this side, and make a pencil mark. Same thing on the other side. All right. <coughs> So now we're gonna grab that back out and make our final cuts. All right, so it's basically the same process that we've been doing so far, which is cutting these tabs back. We're gonna send these around an uh, inch and a quarter. The only difference here is this point right down in here where uh, the, the corner where all the water is gonna collect. Very, very important that we don't cut that corner too short. In fact, we're gonna let that out a quarter inch pass the mark that I made so that any water collecting up here in this corner is going to run out and make sure that it's past the corner down by the roof. So we're going to make a mark a quarter inch past there and then bring our cut right in through the corner till the uh, till it's a quarter inch past this corner here. All right, so this cut we're taking right in through the corner, right to the quarter inch past mark, right in this area. Same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna make our inch and a quarter marks on these uh, the, the marks that we scribe with our pencil make an inch and a quarter pass and that's where this is going to get cut off Now on the top part, the 7 8 inch flange that goes into the chimney, very similar to what we did on the bottom of the side pieces. Take a cut in through on the corner all the way to the pencil mark, the first pencil mark that we made, right to that point where that pencil mark comes up. And then you're going to leave a little tab on there to bend around on the inch and, or I'm sorry, the 7 8 inch part. You're going to leave about a 3 quarter inch tab to bend around. And then just cut right down through this second mark that we made, the inch and a quarter, for this little flange to bend around on the side. Same thing on the other side, right in through the corner of the 7 8 inch tab, right to where that first pencil mark is. Cut that off with a three quarter inch tab to bend around. And then we've got the inch and a quarter mark on this side and we'll be good. All right, 
So there, all the cuts have been made. Take these uh, inch and a quarter flanges and bend those around just like we did on the bottom. Uh, make a nice clean and extra hard bend so that it gets nice and uh, a nice and sharp bend in there. All right, so then we're gonna do the same thing that we did on those side flanges. I put a nice bead of caulk right in here. A nice little bead of caulk right in these corners. I would put a very liberal bead right in there. And then this piece is just gonna get smashed in over that caulk. And remember we left these corners here long enough that all that water is gonna divert out past there. And there again, we're gonna fill that up with caulk real good, but these corners are left long enough that all that water is gonna just come well out past there. We're gonna put a real liberal bead right in this corner here. All right, so we're ready to throw this last piece in there. <clears throat> Pushing it down into this corner. Make sure that both tabs are out, pass, and fitting in there real nice. So here you can see what these corners look like. Because we left that a quarter inch past the sides, all that water is gonna come out and run well past that. And we've got a nice big bead of caulk back in there that's gonna take care of the rest of that. So once you've got both sides, everything's nicely tucked down in place, we're gonna go ahead and just put a bunch of nails way up high across the top and then a piece of ice guard right over top of this coil as well. So we've got this top piece nailed in place, the ice guard over top of that and we are ready to just notch our next shingle right around all of this and head right up through the roof with our shingles. Alrighty, so that is it. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. We've gone completely around the entire chimney. Um, the one thing that we haven't done yet is put our caulk into these grooves, but after we get this chimney repointed in these areas, this will get a nice bead of clear caulk right along this groove. But before we do that, we'll want to get this chimney repointed, but that's what it looks like after the shingles are notched up and around, and that is it.